Very excited to talk about an upcoming technology summit going to take place in Dallas, Texas, April 12th, 13th, and 14th. We've got an incredible technology to roll out in, in, in mobile apps and gamification. What we want to talk about over the next 15, 18, 20 minutes is really what it would be like if we could build a community where for the very first time there was true transparency in business, in social networking, in apps, and in network marketing. What I'm talking about is the ability to really gauge the magnitude of our social graph and our social network. You see, for the last 15 years as consumers, we've all been participating in something we didn't even know we were in, which is this idea of eyeball acquisition. Maybe you've heard this, but eyeball acquisition has been going on since the 90s in the shift of trillions where traditional media companies, news and print and radio and television, there's been four or five families that have owned access to kind of the information highway. And then when the internet came out, it totally changed it. In 1996, Hotmail.com uh, opened up their doors and started the company. 18 months later, a couple 20-year-old kids, by the way, 18 months later, the company sells for $420 million. Why? What's the value of eyeballs? Well, in Hotmail's case, it was worth $400 million. And then after that, MySpace sells to Rupert Murdoch in 2005 for $580 million. Facebook opens up. Twitter opens up. YouTube opens up. And the values for these companies have been unbelievable. It's been astonishing. It's not about the revenue that they create. It's about the eyeballs that they acquire. Because if you think about it, Facebook has never charged any of us to use Facebook. Instagram had never raised $1 in revenue. They've never sold anything. But they sold to Facebook for a billion dollars. Why? Eyeballs. Today's real estate values aren't in houses. They're not in locations or mansions. They're in cell phones. Because people's phones are glued to their faces. There's an app in San Diego called Mogul. It's a restaurant app where this guy, John Carter, who's an advisor to our firm and a partner of ours, um, he launched a, basically a gamified version of eating out. So you go spend $200 at a sushi restaurant. You use your Mogul account on your mobile phone, on your app, and you get 10% back, 10% back on all your purchases. So they've got a gamified eating out app. How do people find out about that app? They are hear from it. They hear from their friends about it. That's how it works. So as you watch the world change right in front of your eyes, don't take my word for it. Take the world's word for it. Every magazine in the world right now, if you've been to an airport lately or been to a gas station, no matter where you see magazines, they're all talking about mobile. I've got a stack of them in front of me with Time Magazine's Man of the Year last year with none other than Mark Zuckerberg. Whether it's Entrepreneur or TechCrunch or Fortune or Time Magazine, all of them are all talking about mobile and this current credibility. It's not about industries that are 10 and 20 and 30 years old operating on those old rules and running those old plays. It's about the new currency, the new credibility. It's about the new way of doing business. So if you think about how these companies get driven, they, they get built by us. How did you find out about Instagram? Instagram as a company doesn't take pictures itself and post them. You've never watched a YouTube, YouTube video. The content's created by us. I hope that makes sense. Words with Friends is a platform where I can engage with my friends. So in order for me to engage with my friends, don't I have to invite them? So naturally, the gamified behavior in all these apps and all these games and all these social networks inherently built in is for us to want to connect with our peers, us to want to connect with our friends. So how do we connect with them? If they're not on Instagram, if they're not on Pinterest, if they're not a YouTube fan, if they're not on Instagram, we have to invite them. Most of them, when they get started, Pinterest was for sure, Facebook was, Gmail was, invitation only. Heck, at Facebook, you had to have a specific email address to even get an invitation. You had to have a harvard.edu uh, harvard email address to even get in their deal. And then once they get out of the gates, Instagram got a million downloads in their first 30 days, 100 million in 18 months, and then sold the company for a billion dollars. So a lot of people think this is a trend. A lot of people think this is like a cool thing. It's not a trend. It's a way that we live our lives. You know, smartphones are an indispensable part to the way that we live. It doesn't matter if you live in San Diego, Tokyo, Mexico City, or Moscow, or Zimbabwe for that matter. Everywhere in the world, people have, have – their lives have been transformed by the consumer behavior that the cell phones have driven. They help navigate our world. They help connect people. People use our cell phones as a way to shop. People use their cell phones as a way to manage their investments, as a way to manage their bank accounts. People use cell phones in these mobile apps through health and fitness apps, whether it's like a, uh, MyFitnessPal where they track their calories, they track their walks, their runs. Nike's got an app out where people can measure the distance, their rate, their pace, their time. 
There's a mobile app for everything. You've heard that line used for a couple of years, but today it's true. There's over a million mobile apps out there, and it's not a domestic U.S. conversation. We're talking about a global movement. To give you an idea, there's more mobile phones in China than computers in the world. If you look at the United States, there's 103% mobile phone penetration. That means there's more phones than people. Europe, 120% of Europe has a mobile phone. Is that the craziest thing you've ever heard or what? You start looking at Asia, 74% of all of Asia has a cell phone. You know what that tells you? There's billions of people with a cell phone just in Asia. We're fishing in a very large stock pond, and the fish are hungry. And the, one of the unique things about this movement or this story is it's so funny. It's so funny that venture capital dollars are just pouring into this space where – Every time you turn around, there's another company going public for $100 million, or another company being purchased for $250 million, or another mobile app that just launched. Four months later, they got 30 million downloads. To give you an idea of how fast it's growing, to give you an idea of how fast it's growing, Angry Birds' last app got 50 million downloads in 35 days. 35 days, 50 million downloads. The audience build in this conversation is so freaking big it's like nothing we've ever seen before. And the reason is because there's an app for everything. The, the, today's value is in the eyeballs. And if you think about it, grab your cell phone right now. I actually have a white iPhone 4S. It's the same phone that's on the screen right now. And half the apps that are on the screen, I have in my phone. I've got an Angry Birds app. I have Voxer on my phone. I have Pinterest. I have Gas Buddy because I never want to pay too much for gas. Gas Buddy tells me where to get the cheapest gas. I have Pandora because I don't listen to the radio because it's full of crappy commercials. I have Ticketmaster because I have an in-app alert system, and I've checked all the bands that I like, and I get alerted anytime they ever come to California. I play Jeopardy on my phone. I have TripAdvisor on my phone, so I always know where to eat, eat cool restaurants, stay at cool hotels. I've got apps on my phone like Send It Social, which is an app where I can send gifts to my friends through an app. If I want to send a martini to you across the country, I can do it without ever leaving my phone. That's the world that we're in. Our world has completely been appified. And if you think about some of the uniquenesses of some of the apps, this is an app called Giftly. Think about how much revenue is being generated from the apps. It's not just a free app and it's a cheesy little way that people can chat or uh, you know, play games with each other. Apps are real business. This is an app that just raised another few million dollars. Uh, it's an app that you can send gifts to people all around the world, not just for Christmas. I'm talking everyday stuff. You can send a gift card to a sushi restaurant. You can send a cup of coffee to somebody on the other side of the world in Tokyo. And you can do it right from your phone right to their phone. And it's the easiest thing to do. But think about how much commerce, how much revenue is flowing through a community like that. Imagine being able to send gifts to your friends and get paid to do it. Imagine to introduce your friends to an app community where when they download gifts, they buy gifts, they send gifts, you get paid off of all of it. So now instead of being in just skincare or just weight loss or just real estate or just finance, you can build an app community that has apps in all industries and you get a little sliver off of all of them, almost like a toll booth. Every single dollar that flows through there, pop, 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 you get a piece of all of it. Think of how sick that would be. So to me, the thing that powers this entire conversation isn't the apps themselves, it's the behavior that drives the apps. People always say compensation drives behavior. But what behavior does that compensation plan drive? Think about games. How in the world does Farmville get $3 million in revenue every single day? It's a fake farm with fake farmers, fake squash, fake rewards, fake prizes, and fake money. But they're generating real dollars, $3 million a day. You know why? They've got tens of millions of people plugged into it every single day. Every single day. Why? Social connection, interaction, people want to be a part of a community, people want to be challenged, they want to be rewarded, they want to be recognized, and all of those things exist inside of Farmville. What is Farmville? It's a game. The behavior that games create, the number one rule for a game, it's got to be fun. But the best games are the games that are helpful and useful. So imagine if we could gamify app sharing. What if we could build an incentive model to where your mission was to go out and open the eyes of other people? Add gamification on top of building a business. That's what we're talking about doing. And what's so cool about it is it's a completely fresh, fresh perspective with points and downloads and games and rewards. Download apps for your friends, earn rewards. Very, very simple concept.
It's been done in so many other industries. Think about it. What airline do you fly? And why do you fly that airline? Do you have points? Do you get miles? How about your credit card? What about the credit card commercials on television all the time that if you use this credit card, you get 5% back, 5% cash back on your, on your credit card? That's gamification. You've been gamified. The whole world has been gamified. Restaurants, credit cards, hotels, shopping, loyalty rewards cards, buy 10 foot long sandwiches, get your 11th one free. That's a game. That's gamification. So what's so strong about a group of people collectively with collaboration in a transparent world, one person can change the world. The power of one to change many. And it only starts with one person. That's how Facebook started. One guy, Mark Zuckerberg, told his four roommates. His four roommates, one of them was in a fraternity. He told his 15 fraternity buddies, and it blew up. A few months later, they were all over every Ivy League school. A handful of months later, they're all over every college. A handful of years later, they're at a half a billion people. In 2013, they're over a billion. Eight or nine-year-old company started by a 20-year-old kid. How in the world did it happen? Started with one guy changed the world. And it's all about, in our world, transparency. Nobody made any dollars in Facebook. There's people in Facebook that were one of the first 500 people to download it and get on the website. They've got 100 million people in their group. They don't even know it because Facebook's not transparent. Some of the very first people to download Instagram and share it on their Twitter pages. Do you know how many people downloaded Instagram because they saw them post something on Twitter? Well, you'd never know because Twitter doesn't tell you. You have no idea. Instagram doesn't tell you. You know how many people that you've introduced to LinkedIn have told other people it shows you through two levels how many connections you have, but it stops. Could you imagine if you could actually see how big of an audience you really have, how, how powerful and influential you truly are? What if we added dollars to the back end of that? Do you think people get excited about that? It really is time to reward people for their social graph. In today's world, true value is in the audience. True value is in the community. True value is in being able to build a community of people who spend time engaged in your community. And it's not on a website anymore. Facebook came out a handful of months ago and said their biggest mistake was that they didn't become a mobile company faster. They launched the domestic U.S. as a website in 2004. Mobile apps didn't even come out until 2009. That's when the App Store came out. So for five years, they fiddle-farted around on the Internet. And then all of a sudden, once the mobile app came out, it exploded. Because we're in a mobile world. So if what we've covered so far has made some sense, it's if, if it's intrigued you, uh, which in the last 12 minutes, I don't know how you wouldn't be able to get excited about the idea of a gamified mobile app sharing network with real rewards around the entire world. This is not a domestic conversation. This is a 38 country day one launch in six languages. So the game is absolutely on. It's on like Donkey Kong. Get your butt to Dallas. Dallas, uh, April 12th, 13th, 14th, the very first phase of this app is going to be on people's phones at the event. We're super excited. <laughs>